Hi friends, let's read the book today, The Black Hole Debacle by Carrie Claiborne Boyle, illustrated by Deborah Melmon. Give me a like and follow so you don't miss the next story or share this one with a friend. It's a fun one. Pause to read what it's about. Jordy's future as an astronomer was written in the stars. She was awed by asteroids, perplexed by planets, and mesmerized by moons. She even named her dog Neptune. So, when something out of this world happened in the middle of Miss Snorberger's geography lesson, Jordy could not believe her luck. There, churning in Jordy's desk, was a black hole. She reached in for a pencil, but the black hole got it first. She reached in for crayons, but it gobbled them up too. She reached in for her latest Mission to Mars magazines, but they were gone in a ginormous gulp. Jordy stopped reaching in. After all, something capable of noshing planets might like hand sandwiches, too. Fortunately, Jordy's class seemed unaware of the shadowy stranger. No one would let her keep a hungry black hole, and Jordy knew definitely she was going to keep it. Given the gravity of the situation, the black hole would have to remain a secret. While class droned on, Jordy watched the black hole swallow her lunchbox, pencil case, and geography homework to Mrs. Snor Ms. Snorberger's annoyance. She didn't really have a choice. It's not like you can scold a black hole for its less than stellar manners. After school, Jordy used her left rain boot to coax the black hole into her backpack. There, it snarfed down her water bottle, library books, and softball glove Molly had lent her. Now, Molly refused to sit next to Jordy on the bus. What could Jordy say? That at least the black hole hadn't snacked on Molly instead? At home, Jordy shooed Neptune away and crammed the black hole into her closet. Of course, it promptly gorged on her soccer ball, sweatshirt, unicorn underwear, and her favorite pom-pom hat. It did, however, spit back the unicorn underwear. At dinner, when Jordy asked to replace some of her lost items, she got a stern lecture about being more responsible with her belongings. Now, Mrs. Snorberger, Molly, and Jordy's parents were mad at her. If only the black hole preferred broccoli and meatloaf over softball gloves and geography homework. Things were definitely getting tricky. Grr. Meanwhile, back in Jordy's room, things had gone from tricky to troublesome. The black hole had gotten bigger, and now it was spilling out of her closet. The situation went from troublesome to terrible. The voracious visitor began pulling things off her shelves and drinking the light. A soccer trophy whizzed past Jordy's head as the room grew dimmer. Then things went from terrible to truly tragic. On the floor in the middle of her room lay Neptune's empty collar. Did you eat my dog? Jordy shouted into the void. In response, the black hole let out a polite burp. Feasting on pom-pom hats and sweatshirts was one thing, but devouring her dog was quite another. Jordy slammed her door shut and paced the hallway, trying to formulate a plan. She didn't know what would happen to Neptune, but she did know nothing could escape an ordinary black hole not even light. But then this was no ordinary black hole. She had to get her dog back. Jordy opened her door to find that the black hole now filled her entire room. She took a deep breath, stepped to the black hole's edge, and leapt into the shadowy center. 
Jordy tumbled in a darkness that seemed to grow colder and colder. She could feel the black hole's gravity stretching her body into a long, thin noodle. And when she opened her mouth to holler for Neptune, no sound came out. After a while, Jordy began noticing things floating around her. There was the noodled softball glove and noodle geography homework. And finally, much to Jordy's relief, a wide-eyed noodled Neptune. Jordy snatched Neptune and the glove and to make Miss Norberger happy her homework. Then she reached deep into her pocket and pulled out her unicorn underwear. Patooey! The next thing Jordy knew, she was sprawled on the floor with a whimpering, now unnoodled Neptune licking her face. Jordy sat up and considered her cosmic acquaintance who was now seeping into the hall. She had quite an adventure, but Jordy knew black holes needed space. They were meant to graze galaxies and slurp stars not dine on dogs. So, while her parents watched TV, Jordy used one of her rainbow sneakers to entice the black hole into her yard. There, after one last wistful look, she firmly kicked it into the night sky. Harumph! The next morning, Jordy slumped at her desk. Her rescue mission had really stretched her thin. But when she reached in for a pencil, she found her desk jam-packed. Slowly, Jordy pulled out a water bottle, sweatshirt, pencil case, lunchbox, soccer ball, her left rain boot, a pom-pom hat, pencils, crayons, and one rainbow sneaker. Only her library books and magazines were missing. Why Jordy's galactic guest had ventured into her desk in the first place would remain a mystery. But now Jordy knew something that no other astronomer knew. It turned out black holes are ravenous readers. And that's the end, friends. Pause to read more information about black holes. And more and more, like why they described uh, Jordy and her dog being noodled, and more, how big are black holes. I hope you like that story. It was fun. Until next time, friends, take care. Bye.